What is the nature of evil in the Harry Potter novels? I'm Ari Armstrong, author of Values of Harry Potter. Today I want to discuss two aspects of evil as shown in those Potter novels. One is evil's parasitic dependence on the good, and number two is its tendency to self-destruct in the presence of strong values. So let's first look at the, at the dependency of evil on the good. In the very first novel, we see that Voldemort lives in and through another person, that being Quirrell. Now our body and soul is inherently, those are inherently good things, yet Quirrell voluntarily turns his over to Voldemort's evil. We also see that Voldemort sustains his own body by drinking the blood of the unicorn, that being the symbol of purity. Later on, Voldemort's, Voldemort, through his diary, takes over the innocent girl Ginny in another attempt to regain his strength. Finally, Voldemort succeeds in regaining his full powers through the bone of the, bone of the father, the flesh of the servant, and the blood of the enemy, the enemy being Harry Potter. Then Voldemort's snake takes over the body of the Astorian Batilda Bagshot to use her for Voldemort's evil purposes. Or consider the Horcruxes. To create a Horcrux, which Voldemort intends to use to keep himself alive, he has to murder innocent people. And Voldemort, in his, when his first curse rebounds in the presence of Lily, he actually sends a piece of his soul to live in Harry, and so Harry actually keeps Voldemort alive, alive in part by keeping that piece of Voldemort safe inside of himself. So that's another way in which the evil is dependent on the good. So next, let's look at the tendency of evil to self-destruct. If we look at the characters of Quirrell, or Peter Pettigrew, or other Death Eaters, or even Voldemort himself, we find that these are characters who systematically destroy all of the values that make life worth living, and in many cases, end in an agonizing and painful death. As we've mentioned, Voldemort's first curse against Harry rebounds upon himself and destroys him to a large degree. We also see Quirrell burning himself because, again, of Lily's lasting love for Harry. Interestingly, the Horcruxes are destroyed by Voldemort's pet snake, that is the basilisk, or the fang or poison of the basilisk, or the sword of Gryffindor, which absorbs this basilisk venom strength into itself. But in either case, you see evil being used to destroy evil. Near the end of the story, Voldemort, in t attempting to kill Harry, actually destroys the piece of his own soul that lives within Harry. And then finally, Voldemort, in his last attempt to murder Harry, his curse again rebounds and destroys Voldemort instead. So what does this mean for us? We can look at evil at the external level and at the level of psychology. At the external level, that is evil outside of ourselves, we see that evil is often parasitical. The nature of evil is fundamentally destructive. It's destroying values. It's against values. So values are the positive. Evil is the destruction of values. For example, we see that tyrant, tyrants often loot the productivity of their citizens. So evil people destroy values, and they often destroy themselves and their own values along with the values of others. But of course we can't just stand by and let evil destroy itself, we have to stand up to evil and all to offer a positive alternative to evil and help evil along to its path of self-destruction. On the psychological level, our evil dispositions are parasitic on our pursuit of life-pursuing values. So in other words, the evil part of us can only survive because there's some element or initial part of good, even though that can be corrupted in some people totally to the total self-destruction of the person. So we can subdue the, our own evil, and we can let it rebound upon itself by pursuing values, and these include loving relationships with others. When we understand the nature of evil, we can work to defeat it, and this is one thing that the Harry Potter novels helps us to do.